Are you feeling a bit under the weather? Don't call your doctor, you can't afford that, and don't research peer-reviewed articles, yawn boring. And definitely don't consult with the witch hunched over her cauldron behind the 7-Eleven. She's too busy making me a potion that'll make my feet bigger, because you know what they say about guys with big feet. It's time to play roulette with your health, so open up TikTok and start swiping. <laughs> TikTok, a mystical portal of medical misinformation where, after two seconds of scrolling, someone will try to convince you you can get rid of your toothache by singing the Animaniacs Nation for the World song backwards after, of course, updating the lyrics because of all the wars and stuff since the 90s. Homeopathic slash alternative medicine has of course been around forever, but TikTok, and by extension the entire internet, has given health gurus with questionable credentials access to way more people than they've ever had before. Today we will not be debating the effectiveness of natural remedies in general, because that touches on some complex questions about religion, tradition, and philosophy, and enough people on the internet already hate me. Instead, we will be going over health trends popularized by TikTok that are verifiably pointless, outright dangerous, and or objectively hilarious. Do you want to remove excess earwax while also causing an extreme fire hazard by putting a lit candle right next to your highly flammable hair so you can recreate the 2007 film Ghost Rider starring Nicolas Cage at the same time? Well then ear candling might be for you! Supposedly the way this works is that the flame at the end of the hollow candle creates a vacuum that pulls earwax and debris from the ear as it burns. Except it doesn't. It just doesn't. It's really easy to prove these are a scam. All you have to do is light an ear candle, don't put it in your ear, and then cut it open. First, let's look at the one that was in my ear. There is definitely something inside there. Ugh. Okay, now let's see if there's anything in the one that wasn't in my ear. No way. There's even more stuff. Now this, ladies, gentlemen, and etc. of the jury, is why control tests are not just for nerds. It turns out that the earwax that was making everybody so self-conscious about their ears was just wax from the candle. Not only that, but these candles leave a gross residue behind, meaning they not only don't work, but they are also leaving candle wax in people's ears. This scam is cartoonishly evil, convincing people that their ears are disgusting, so they keep buying more candles. Meanwhile, the candles are clogging up their ears even more. Clogged ears, you say? I have a candle for that. Ear candles have been stuck in an endless cycle of being popularized, then debunked, then popularized again since at least the early 2000s, and it's crazy to see this cycle continue all the way into 2023. Then again, we all use a product that says do not put in ear exclusively to put in our ears, so maybe we're all just f idiots. But before I continue, I'd like to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Balesa. Right now, I'm partnering up with Balesa to send out free vibrating toys and gift cards for toys to everyone who signs up for my giveaway. Balesa is a bi women company whose mission is to empower everyone to embrace, explore, and celebrate their sexuality. Here are some of the exciting toys they have to offer. First up, we have the Pebble. While small in size to fit perfectly in your hand, this is a suction toy like no other without any of those annoying pattern modes that nobody uses. Next up, the Air Vibe. The Air Vibe offers dual stimulation and can be tucked into this discreet little case when not in use. It's silent, but effective, like a well-trained assassin whose target is your The Demi Wand's flexible neck allows you to get just the right angle and pressure, and it's a whisper quiet toy that works with all body types. The Thump is Balesa's Swiss Army Knife, a toy that truly does it all. This premium quality silicone toy vibrates, suctions, and thumps using Balesa's in Improved pleasure jet technology. So what are you waiting for? Everyone who clicks the link in my description and signs up for my giveaway will get a free toy or gift card. Head over there while this offer lasts. Hey there, welcome back. Bad news, the water you're drinking is apparently not expensive enough. According to our source, white woman in boho chic two-piece. By popular demand, let's talk about Alive Water, why I'm obsessed with it. I pay $88 a month to have this delivered to my house. $88?! When that money could instead be spent on Baldur's Gate 3 Deluxe Edition? 
I don't think so. I'm gonna chase my water with fluoride like a real American. This is alive water. Yes, it comes in these gorgeous, gorgeous containers. So their water comes from two natural springs that have zero industrial contamination. This is high vibe water and you can feel it. The existence of alive, high vibe water implies the existence of dead, low vibe water, which is apparently the water all of us plebeians drink. Oh my god. The vibes are off. Let's check out their website. Holy shit, that is the ugliest logo I've ever seen. Whose nephew threw this together? Oh, hell yeah. You know it's good web design when you become overstimulated the moment you open the page. I mean, they have to be telling the truth. Look at this incredible hover animation. Now, I love massive jugs as much as the next person, but according to the website, for just two people, you could have up to 12 jugs just sitting around in your house for a month. Oh wait, they're also selling a $200 shelf to hold all the jugs. How convenient. Oh my god, you also have to pay a $33 deposit fee for each jug. The jugs aren't included in the cost? So yeah, the water's expensive. But you'll be happy to know that it's also a total ripoff. While a live water tries to make it sound like they're scooping water directly from Mother Nature's leaky teats at Opal Springs, it's actually just Oregon tap water. Pretty nice tap water, especially when compared to the sulfur sludge that leaks out of some of the faucets here in Texas, but still just tap water. Probably would just be cheaper to take a family trip up to Oregon and fill up every few months. This is 9.5 alkaline water from my Kongen machine. This is the only medical grade water ionizer in the world, first only existing in Japanese hospitals. Oh, sick. I want a sci-fi gadget that makes me bubble water. I wonder how much this- Oh my god! Medical grade living alkalized water. I'm gonna do a couple different tests here. The first test is like the cool guys do, pH test. We're gonna compare that to medical alkaline water. Wherever they're from, when you separate it from the source for 48 hours, it's dead water. Anything in it that's good dies. However, if they add chemicals to it, it may it may appear alkaline. Let's do it. Let's do a straw test to it. Carbon dioxide released during digestion. So if you zone out during all the big fancy medical words and third grade science experiments like I did and just look at the top result on Google, alkaline water is just water that has a higher pH level than regular tap water. The idea behind drinking alkaline water is that it will somehow neutralize the acidity of your bloodstream, which it won't. Cool idea though. When we drink things, they go to our stomachs and our stomachs have to maintain a very specific level of acidity to digest our food. So any alkaline water you drink is just gonna get neutralized immediately. If you somehow manage to drink enough alkaline water that it affects the pH level of your stomach, you can suffer from symptoms like indigestion, bacterial overgrowth, and malnourishment, AKA your tum tum will hurt real bad. So you can just put that $5,000 into your kid's college fund, even though by 2030, that's probably not even going to be enough to pay for textbooks. Putting garlic cloves in my nose after a sinus infection. Oh no. <laughs> Hey, remember when people were shoving garlic up their nose to get rid of congestion? Yeah, don't do that, you goober. What are you trying to cook up in there? Spaghetti? Perhaps a nice... Alio Eolia? All you're doing is irritating your mucous membranes and making more mucus and trapping the mucus that was already in there. I'm just gonna move on quickly because this is just super gross. And on this episode of a weird shit I do for my wellness, coffee enemas. Coffee enemas are actually an ancient tradition that are really good in detoxifying the body and getting the things we do not want out of it, the stagnancy and even things like viruses, parasites, all of that. My thing is, unless that coffee is being brewed by a bisexual with a nose ring, I don't want it anywhere near my mouth or my butthole. It is an anti-parasitic. It's great for your mental health, great for your immune system, and a bunch of other things I will put on the screen. But I just feel so good. Coffee enemas are so taboo, but more people should be using them and talking about them because they have so many benefits. I'll keep you updated. Make sure you're following me for more. I hate the ominous shot of the bag at the very end. I hate... 
I hate the POV I'm being forced into. So what a coffee enema supposedly does is dilate the bile ducts in the liver to release toxins. Whatever the f*** that means. It apparently has a long list of benefits that makes you wonder what else we should be putting up our poopers. I'm gonna do a sprite enema and ascend to the astral plane. First I make out with the dog for about 10 minutes in the morning. First I make out with the dog. And I go straight into making my coffee enema. I'm sorry, what? I prefer to put coffee up my ass. It has way more benefits. No, 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 wait, hold, hold on. I feel like we kind of skimmed over. She does what with her dog for 10 minutes? One coffee enema can increase your glutathione production by 700%. Glutathione is the big mac daddy of antioxidants. It combats free radicals. Did you say combats radicals? Well, I'll stick anything up my butt to stick it to those blue haired commies. After they make my oat milk frappuccino, of course. I do about three to four per week and sometimes I'll even do a couple in one day. Three or four times a week? You're done. You're done. Give me the hose. You're enjoying this too much. So, coffee enemas. An uncomfortable rectal remedy, but totally worth it, right? No! You learned nothing! Not only is there no concrete enemas- F*** hot. Concrete enema- Jesus! Oh my god! Not only is there no concrete evidence that- <laughs> Not only is there no concrete evidence that coffee enemas provide any benefits, but this creative caffeine consumption has been linked to proctocolitis, infection, and three deaths. According to baseball rules, that means don't put the coffee in your butt. This is day one of me ingesting borax. I hopped on the borax train. I jumped on the borax train. I have officially jumped on the borax train. Borax. 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 Go check it out. This is the generation that mocked us during the Tide Pod incident. Look who's sneaking snacks from the laundry room now, Grandma. Borax is all natural and helps with bone building and immune and brain function. It dissolves easily in water and helps absorb calcium and magnesium. This drink, which I will show, will help prevent inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, reverse male impotency, treat PCOS, menstruation issues, hormonal imbalance, hot flashes, night sweats, menhance, testosterone levels. Wow, can it also wax my car and boost my credit score? That'd be pretty neat. So the boomers got into the borax and became convinced that a pinch of the laundry powder in their water every morning could cure them of all kinds of ailments. The main claim was that it reduces inflammation and helps with joint pain. So he learned about borax on here and he's been taking it and he doesn't have any joint pain at all. Everybody wants a miracle cure, especially when it comes to something as horrible as chronic pain. But I probably don't have to tell you that eating borax is a terrible idea. First, while a few studies have shown that there might be some benefits to increasing boron in your diet, eating borax or sodium borate can cause vomiting, reproductive issues, and risk kidney failure. Not only that, but borax is produced in facilities that aren't required to use food safe procedures, meaning that the borax that you're eating could be exposed to all kinds of chemicals and contaminants because they're making laundry detergent, not Kool-Aid. But these people went crazy, drinking borax, soaking in borax, and posting tutorials on how to cook up some yummy laundry sauce for the whole family. So I get a lot of you asking me what it is that I do with this beautiful powder here in this box. And I'm gonna show you what I do every day, um, usually in the morning, but it's I'm getting a late start today. So I take a pinch of this, a pinch of baking soda, and a pinch of Celtic sea salt, and I put it in a cup of water, and I drink it. This woman was sort of their lead poison leader for a little bit, even though at this point she's pretty much deleted all evidence of her involvement. She, uh, she still has some really interesting alternative medicine and conspiracy theory content on her TikTok account. You're telling me the same people who are eating laundry detergent also think the moon landing was faked. Shocker. This is a mineral that 
is portrayed as a laundry booster and cleaner so and they do this on purpose because they don't want you to be of the mindset of consuming this they want you to be of the mindset that it's not for consumption that's for a very good reason um, it's because of all the health benefits that it has. See, this is the thread that connects all of these crazy health trends together and allows them to persist for so long. The belief that any evidence that they're harmful is part of a government conspiracy. It is an absolute war zone for doctors and nurses trying to clear up medical misinformation on TikTok because every time they try to warn people of the very real research risks of the very stupid things they're doing, they're accused of being liars, of wanting people to stay sick so they can make more money. As if the TikTok gurus selling their followers bogus information and $5,000 water ionizers don't also have something to gain. Making this video was frankly depressing. Most of these health trends could be debunked within five minutes of Googling. Shut up, you fuck dingleberry. Uh, excuse me? You participated in a ritual where you pretended to eat the flesh and blood of a dead Jewish man for 18 years. Okay, it sounds really, really bad when you put it that way. That's just normal Christian. We're all just apes with too much brains in our heads, terrified of death and dying and looking for someone to tell us what to do. Oh, come on. These are obvious scams. Everybody's trying to sell happiness so they can buy their own. There's been snake oil salesmen since before there were snakes. Okay, but seriously, how could people fall for this stuff? The medical industry is incredibly corrupt and most people can't afford basic care. Hunching over our desks in beige offices deprives us of the vitamins and level of activity that we need. The food industry is horribly underregulated. We're all eating poison. Of course people are spiraling into paranoia and conspiracy theory. What are you doing in my house? Looking for your borax? <sighs> right.